Hi, and welcome to this Clavister demonstration video. This will cover what is new in Clavister Core Plus 9.30. This is the agenda. We will talk about IPv6 support. We will talk about the improved SSL VPN, the new and improved HTTP poster, password caching prevention, MAC address authentication, the increased number of IDP signatures, the new hardware migration wizard, the IPv6 training course, and a Q&A session. IPv6 support. This is new for Core Plus to have IPv6 support and it is added here in Core Plus 9.30. Cluster Core Plus 9.30 includes support for the new IP address standard IPv6. The standard is designed to succeed the existing IPv4 standard and there are of course numerous advantages of using IPv6. The main reason is that there is a larger number of available global IPv6 addresses compared to the address space of IPv4. This also means that NAT is no longer required to share a limited number of public IPv4 addresses. IPv6 is also designed to have more efficient routing and routers don't fragment packets and the header is always the same size. The whole address space is redesigned in IPv6. It also supports multi-homing, IPsec and a whole lot of other features. IPv6 features in Core Plus 9.30. Uh, we have support for I IPv6 in the address book objects, Ethernet and VLAN interfaces where we can do static IPv6 address assignment. We support the following IP rule actions. Allow, drop and reject. We also support routing over IPv6, policy based routing, ICMPv6 and neighbor discovery which will replace ARP in IPv6. In order to use IPv6 in Core Plus, you must activate it globally. That is done in the system, advanced settings, IP settings. Here you enable IPv6 traffic processing and then you can also adjust a lot of other settings. If you look at the address book, you find it in objects address book. Here we can create address book objects based on IP version 6 and we can add them according to the RFC documents and for example if we have two colon characters that's shorthand for a number of zeros so for example the following IP 2001 colon DB8 colon colon 1 means that after the first bit of the address we have a lot of zeros and then it finally ends with the number 1. This is a full IPv6 address so the IPv6 addresses is much longer than the IP4 addresses. We can also type in network addresses like this. This means that the first 32 bits determine the network. We can also create ranges. Here we see a range from the dot one address to the dot 10 address. What's important to know that in Core Plus we cannot group IP version 4 and IP version 6 addresses together. Therefore, we have a special group called IP6 group where we can group together IP version 6 IP addresses, ranges, and network. To enable IP version 6 on a specific Ethernet interface, we must open it and enable IP version 6 and assign IP address, network, and optionally the gateway. The same can be done on a VLAN interface. We enable IPv6, we assign IP address, network and also optionally the de default gateway. In order to allow drop or reject IPv6 traffic we must set up an IP rule. We can only use it for IPv6 enabled interfaces and for IPv6 address objects. There can be no mixing between IP version 4 and IP version 6 in a single IP rule. That's why in order to drop IP version 6 traffic explicitly, 
we need to have a specific drop all IPv6 rule or we can of course rely on the default rule which will drop everything if nothing has been matched in the IP rule set. And this would be an example of how to enter an IPv6 rule. We give it a name, IPv6 IP rule. We specify an action, I select allow. And there's also an information box here telling us that which actions are not available. And if we should choose one of them when we do save and activate of the configuration, we will be presented with an error. We can select the service. I chose all ICMPv6 this time. We can attach a schedule and then we determine the source interface, source network, destination interface and destination network. And here we can see a specific all nets 6, which means all available IPv6 addresses. The routing table will look a little bit different now than when we have IPv6 support. We will actually have multiple all net routes. And that's because IPv4 and IPv6 is handled in different routing entries. So that means that we will have one all nets route for IPv4 and one all nets route for IPv6 in the routing table. We can also add proxy neighbor discovery or proxy ND on a specific route. But that route must be manually added. We cannot enable this feature on an automatically added route. In policy based routing, we have also added IPv6 support. And the same rules apply here as for regular IP rules. It must be on IPv6 enabled interfaces and IPv6 address objects. And we cannot combine IPv4 and IPv6 in a single routing rule. And you see here an example of how to do this. I have given it a name, IPv6 routing rule. Forward routing table, I selected the main routing table. And the return routing table, I selected another routing table. This time it was called IPv6. The service HTTP. Optionally I can add a schedule. And then I have determined the source interface, source network, destination interface and destination network. We also support ICMPv6 which is an important part of IPv6. It's of course used for ping or ICMP echo but it's also used for trace routes, neighbor discovery, router solicitation, router advertisement and so on. If we use the ping command from the CLI, we can ping an IPv6 address. This time we ping the .2 address and we support ICMPv6 in Core Plus 930. If you open interfaces, ARP and neighbor discovery, you will find a lot of new features. We can, for example, do neighbor discovery rate limit. Known limitations, IPv6 cannot be used for VPNs, application layer gateways, IDP or traffic shaping. And when it comes to high availability, it is supported, but we will not synchronize the state for IPv6 connections between the peers. So each interface pair will have the same IPv6 address on both master and slave, and using a private IPv6 interface address for each interface in a pair is not possible. So this means that management HA cluster will be done over IPv4. Improved SSL VPN. The improvements we have added is the TLS renegotiation for SSL TLS. This was described in RFC 5746, SSL and TLS renegotiation vulnerability. The description of the attack is that the attacker forms a TLS connection with the target server. The attacker injects contents of his choice and splices in a new TLS connection from a client. The server would think the initial data transmitted by the attacker is from the same entity as the subsequent client data. When we added support for this feature, we, some other areas of Core Plus would also benefit from this improvement. For example, the TLS application layer gateway, the SSL VPN, web authentication using HTTPS, Clavister Web UI using HTTPS. The browser security warning that sometimes was displayed will not appear anymore. Sometimes the warning is nowadays hidden by the browser but still 
the warning is there on an unpatched system. Improved HTTP poster. The HTTP poster has been completely rewritten. It supports a number of new enhancements, such as settings for individual timeouts, possibility to post after each reconfiguration, and greatly improved number of posters. The new HTTP poster also fixed, fixed numerous defects and timeout issues. Please note that if you are already using HTTP posters in a previous release, they will be converted during upgrade. To add an HTTP poster, you go to the system menu, miscellaneous clients, and then you add either one of the predefined or the more general HTTP poster, which will give you this window where you can type in the URL, HTTP post the values, and repost on each reconfiguration, and the repost delay. Password caching prevention. Clevster Core Plus 930 can prevent user login and password to be saved in the web browser. And this applies to the Clevister web UI and SSL VPN logins. Please note that this does not apply to the SSL VPN client. Most modern web browsers should support this feature. However, if you already have saved the username and password from before activating this feature, it must be manually removed from within the web browser. To enable this feature, you go to System, Remote Management, and select Advanced Settings. In the Web UI section, you will find the feature Web UI Allow Login Autocomplete, which you disable. Every time you reach the login page, the username and password will be cleared. MAC Address Authentication. MAC Address Authentication enables HTTP and HTTPS clients to use the MAC address of the connecting client's Ethernet interface for automatic authentication. This means that the authentication is based only on the identity of the client hardware. This is very useful to ensure simple access for a particular device. You don't have to type in the credentials. Every to enable MAC address authentication, you must open up the user authentication rule for HTTP and HTTPS agents. Then you go to the Agent Options tab, specify the login type as MAC authentication. You can also allow clients behind the router to connect. By default, the username will be the MAC address and the password will either be the same MAC address or the MAC auth secret specified here. Clients behind routers are supported. Note, however, that this will mean that the router is authenticated, not the actual user. Primarily, we support radius for this. Local DB is currently not supported. Increased number of IDP signatures. The number of active intrusion detection and prevention, or IDP, signature per model. SG10 and SG60 currently support 15,000 IDP signatures. The bigger models, such as the Claviser SG3200 series, will support up to 22,000 IDP signatures. On our biggest models, the SG4300 and 4500 series, we support up to 30,000 IDP signatures. And the limit here is that you need at least 1,000 megabyte of RAM. If you use a virtual security gateway, a VSG, running under, for example, VMware, the amount of RAM automatically determines maximum number of signatures. The current IDP database contains over 23,000 IDP signatures. Selecting more signatures than supported gives a warnings message on reconfigure. You can see it here. It will say fail to add some signatures in rule IDP something. Maximum number of signatures reached. Not all signatures will be used. The signature will pick the first X signatures read from the signature files, and the reg X will be, of course, the maximum number supported on that platform. Selecting that many signatures is usually considered a configuration error. For example, applying HTTP signatures on FTP traffic. Hardware Migration Wizard. Clavister has released a hardware migration wizard which allows you to migrate from one hardware or VSG platform to another hardware platform. This only applies to Core Plus 9.x. You can download it from clavister.com, open up support, downloads, 
tools and utilities. The prerequisite is, is that you have the configuration backup file from the source platform and the output of the wizard will be a converted configuration backup file which you upload and activate on the target platform. The migration wizard looks something like this. When you start it up uh, it welcomes you and then you go to the next screen where you select the configuration file and it will show you what hardware model, number of interfaces and if high availability is enabled or not. Then you move forward, you select the target hardware model and then you have a list of supported destinations. The next window will give you an interface mapping where you determine what the source interface was and what the target interface will be. Then it will create a file and you select where to store it. You will also see the interface mappings and when you click next the configuration will be converted and you are finished. Then you can restore this converted file onto the target platform. IPv6 training course. We are thrilled with the new IPv6 support but how can we learn more about it? To ease the transition to IPv6 networking, Clarister is creating a brand new training course focusing on IPv6 networking. The training course covers both theoretical IPv6 aspects as well as hands-on exercises for the supported Core Plus 930 features. For Im information about the new IPv6 training course, please visit clavster.com training course schedule. We also have other training courses which you can find on clavster.com training course curriculum. Questions? Please contact Clavister support. Thank you so much for attending this uh, Clavister Core Plus 930 presentation.